Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do 3D modeling with code instead of a graphical program. If you've never done coding with any kind of programming language, the thought of having to create a 3D model with code instead of clicking in a graphical user interface is probably pretty daunting. It feels like it would be much harder and much slower than using something that you can simply point and click or enter a couple of keystrokes with your keyboard. But using a program called OpenSCAD, or I've also seen it called OpenSCAD, you're gonna be able to give directions or instructions code to create 3D models instead of having to draw them out. Why would you do this? Well, you would do it because there are a lot of things that code can do more efficiently in the past, I've used a program called Tinkercad, which is an online app, and it gives you great access to a bunch of different shapes and things that you can combine to make 3D models, and that works pretty good, but there are some things that are still a little clunky and difficult to do. Using code in a program like OpenSCAD gives you the possibility to do things that are harder to do in a graphical format. In a graphical format, you might click and drag things closer to each other, and then use some kind of alignment tool to make sure they're lined up properly. But when you're adding coordinates or using measurements instead, it can be really fast to do those things. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use OpenSCAD to create simple shapes and also how you can combine those things together to make something cool. In this case, I'm gonna combine a few things together to make a wheel with spokes. So without further ado, let's get started. If you haven't yet downloaded OpenSCAD to your computer, just go to OpenSCAD.org and there's a version for Mac, Windows, and Linux or Unix. So for just about any computer, you've got a version that'll work well for you. Once you've downloaded it and installed it and chosen a new model, on the left hand side you'll be able to see the pane where you're actually going to write your code. On the right hand side you're going to see where you're going to view the rendered or previewed image of your model. And then on the bottom, you're gonna see the console where you'll see the messages about the rendering and preview and also anything that you print out to the console window. There's a bunch of other buttons here for different views and zooming, that kind of thing. The ones that we're gonna use most common are the preview and render on the left-hand side of that toolbar. If you're not sure how to do a particular function or even to get started, the best place to go is to the help menu at the top. There's options for the website, the document pack, and also a cheat sheet, which is extremely helpful because it gives all of the most most common functions and lays them out in a way that's easy to refer to. You could print it out, but by using the online version, you're also able to click on the blue hyperlinks for any of the functions and get a much more detailed explanation of each of the functions and also different ways that you can use them. There's 2D shapes, but the thing we're gonna concentrate most on is the 3D shapes like cubes and cylinders. Transformations are also very important. That's how you're gonna move around within the model and rotate and scale and reposition. To create a cylinder, you just need to type the word cylinder and then in brackets put the height, in this case I'm going to choose 12, and the diameter which is 70, and then choose whether or not you want it to be found around the center of the origin. If you choose center equals true, everything x, y, and z will be centered right around the origin, and if you choose false, then the x and y, in the case of cylinders, will be found around the origin, but the z will start at the zero, and the full height will be added to that. I like to use center equals true for most of my models because it's a good reference point to center everything around. To make a cube is even easier, you simply put cube with the dimensions that you want inside of parentheses and you'll get a cube that's 10 by 10 by 10 in this case. Or if you want a rectangular prism or box instead, you still use the cube function, but you can specify the x, y, and z coordinates by putting them inside square brackets. As you can see here, once I preview that, I do get a box or rectangular prism that is 12 on the X dimension, 25 on the Y, and 15 on the Z. Now if I uncomment, and as you can see here, you use the double slashes to comment. If I uncomment the cylinder, you can see that both of them are created, and because of their sizes, they overlap each other. If we use the difference function, it'll subtract the cube from the cylinder because it reads top down. So you can see here the cube has been subtracted from the model and it's just that easy. Because the cube wasn't put around the center, it's going to not be centered in the middle of the cylinder, but if you put center equals true, it would be as well. 
Let's get to the wheel I talked about. By combining different elements, we're able to easily create a model that not only works and provide, that not only functions in its original dimensions, but it's also easy to adjust. So I'm gonna start with the same thing, dimension equals 70. You can also use radius if you'd like, which of course at 70 would make it twice as large, but we're just going to do that. Now that we have our base cylinder for the wheel, we're going to comment it out so that we can focus on the parts inside. And for the parts inside of that outer wheel, I'm gonna create a cylinder but with a diameter of only 50, which means each side will be 10 in the remaining part. And then I'm gonna create cubes inside of that that are actually long rectangles that will extend through the entire circle and give us some spoke. Each rectangle will be the entire diameter, and so it will represent a pair of spokes After the first cube is made, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and then create the second one, which means I'll have two intersecting ones. When we combine all the models together, you can see those poking out. And if we comment out the cylinder, you can see those intersecting cubes, which are making our spokes. Now, if we were to use that same difference command, we can subtract those spokes from the cylinder. And then what we'll be left with is something that's ready to subtract from our original cylinder. It might seem a little weird here because that's not the shape you'd expect to see. But now when we subtract that shape from our original cylinder, that's when we'll get the positive of what the spoke looks like. If you try it out a bit, yourself it'll make perfect sense to you if you're looking at it now it might seem a little strange if we run that now you'll see there's the spokes that are left over from that second section of code where we created the spokes once we've subtracted that from our original cylinder. Now the only thing that's left to do is to cut a hole in the middle and then build a hub so that if you were going to put an axle or shaft through this wheel, you'd be able to print out these wheels on a 3D printer, use a mill or router, and you'd be able to create wheels that you could put onto a model car or a robot or anything like that. So we're gonna create a cylinder that's 20 units for the diameter and another one that's 10, which is gonna be the hole in the inside side of that hub. Now when we run it, you can see here, you only see the larger hub because the smaller cylinder is inside of it. So again, we need to use the difference function and subtract it from that hub. There's our finished wheel. It really was quite simple. Only 17 lines of code total, including a comment and very easy to put together. Once you start playing with these things, you'll be surprised how fast they go together and how by changing just a couple of things, like for example, the X dimension of the spokes, you can see here how they thicken up really quick you can re-render that and print that out in just a few seconds where on a graphical program it could be much more complicated to go and click each item individually change the dimension scale it have to move it and realign it the real power though comes from being able to turn these into parameters by creating variables or parameters you can actually substitute all the way through your code with values that you lay out at the top so you don't have to go digging through the lines of code or trying to remember what each of these individual numbers are you can replace that number with the name of the parameter so here I'm using the wheel diameter, the hub diameter, and the shaft diameter as stand-ins for every place that they're used in my code. It looks like I forgot to use the semicolons, but once I put those in and rendered it, you can see it's the exact same model. This is really powerful because now you can just change the numbers at the top without ever digging into that code again, and it'll work perfectly to keep making the changes you want. Here I made the hub a little bigger. Uh, now I'll try making the wheel itself a little bit bigger, and you'll see what a difference that makes with just a couple keystrokes. If you were doing this in a graphical format, I'm sure it would take longer. No matter how much I use Tinkercad or SolidWorks, it always takes longer than this. You can see that you can also use that in more than one place. So if I use the spoke thickness, I can use it in both of the cubes. And just by changing one number, I affect two different model creations. And you can see here, it's just that simple to affect the difference. Play with any of these parameters and you'll find how easy it is to make any wheel of any size. The last thing I want to show you is what happens if you replace those individual manual commands with a for loop. Now, if you're familiar with coding, you'll understand how this for loop works. What it's going to do is 
repeat the code over and over again for as many times as you choose. So I've added here a number of spoke pairs and just by changing the number of pairs, it will iterate through a different number of times, moving a certain position and also recreating those spokes on every single iteration. I can change it to four, eight, 16, whatever, and it'll go ahead and create those separate spokes for me. I don't have to go in and do a bunch of positioning over and over again. All I need to do is change one number, the number of spoke pairs and it will change in the model that quickly. That's extremely powerful and once you get used to these kind of parametric designs as they're called based on parameters you'll find that it's pretty hard to go back to a place where you have to individually move components in a graphical interface. So many models are easier to do in this way. One other thing that's really helpful compared to a program like Tinkercad is that you can specify how precise you want the models to be. The default on a circle is that it would only have 12 segments, which means that every segment is going to look a little blocky and when you print it out, it's not that smooth. If you put in the special variable, you're able to change it and you can move it from 12 down to one, all the way down to 0 0.01, which makes it a nice smooth circle. When you're done, all you need to do is export the STL, import it to your slicer, and you're ready to send it to your 3D printer. There are of course millions of things that you could create with any kind of 3D modeling software, pretty much an infinite number, depending on your creativity and the kinds of projects that you enjoy making. But I really found that OpenSCAD gives me the capability to do certain things that were more difficult in a typical graphical interface, whether it's something like Tinkercad or even using a program like SolidWorks, which is a much more robust engineering level design software. With OpenSCAD, you can make a few adjustments, especially with those for loops and with different reference points, and you can quickly iterate over and over again the types of things that you're wanting to do. If you wanna duplicate features in different positions or move them around a circle or any of those things, it can be really simple to do with OpenSCAD in a way that would be much more clunky and difficult in a graphical interface. Like any design software, it has its pros and cons, but if you've never checked it out before, I encourage you to check it out. It's a lot easier than you think, and it can create some truly amazing things in a very short period of time. Some of the projects that I'm looking forward to making are enclosures, gears, and a bunch of other different stuff. If you have an idea for something you'd like to see modeled in OpenSCAD, let me know in the comments or send me an email. My information's in the description below. And if you like these kind of videos, please give them a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and check back regularly as I post a new video every week. Until next time, in all your DIY projects, whether they're with physical tools or line by line, don't be afraid to be balder.